In this video, we're going to be painting this cute little iridescent hummingbird. And here is a little bit of a close up of the final painting that I did. So I hope that you're excited about this as I am. I'll first go over the colors that I'm using. The first is going to be New Gamboge. This is a warm yellow. Windsor Lemon, which is a cool yellow. This is Scarlet Lake, which is kind of a coral or a warm red. And then Permanent Rose, which is kind of a magenta cool red. Then I have another Windsor Yellow, just because I mix a lot with that yellow. Then I have Thalo Blue, which is a nice warm blue, and Ultramarine Blue, which is my cool blue. And I thought I might use this green, but I didn't. And I do use just a little bit of this kind of neutral gray tone, and I ended up not using this violet. But I thought that I might before I started, so I went ahead and pointed those out. But we're not going to worry about those. And if you don't have those exact colors, that's completely fine. Um, usually if you buy a set of watercolors, you're going to get pretty much close colors to these. And I'll just have a variety of brushes handy. I ended up not using that large flat brush just because I decided not to do a background for this. So it just wasn't really appropriate for anything else. And the first thing that I'm going to start working on is just the wing of the hummingbird. And I want to do a nice soft wash here. So I'm applying some clear water all over the wings so that I can apply lots of different colors and have them all just kind of merge and bleed together. And the fun thing about hummingbirds, and a lot of birds actually, is that there is a lot of iridescence in them. And I think that that's a really fun effect to achieve, combining lots of washes with uh, dry on wet techniques to just really bring out that effect. And so the first thing I'm doing is applying a really light wash of my phthalo blue. So that's kind of the warmish, blue that leans a little bit green. I know that's kind of a, a weird thing to say because it kind of looks just like a sky blue. And then I'm mixing in a little bit of my Windsor Lemon in there to get a really bright, beautiful green. And I'm just kind of looking over at my photo reference for this initial wash. And I know it looks a little bit bright and bold right now, but watercolor does lighten as it dries. And so I don't need to worry about getting all these colors in the exact right place. I don't need to worry about them bleeding together in kind of a weird way. I'm just kind of putting them generally where they should go and letting them bleed together as they will. Now I'm applying a little bit of my ultramarine blue. And ultramarine blue is a little closer on the color spectrum to like a violet or an indigo, so it's kind of a cool blue. And you can see compared to the phthalo blue I applied at the top of the wing that it does definitely have a different look. And it makes that blue at the top of the wing really, you can almost see that it is a warmer temperature. And I think applying these washes is a really fun part of watercolor painting because you really get to start out very loosely. You don't have to worry about, you know, how things are going to look at this stage because all the work that we do throughout this process makes the hummingbird kind of come to life. But this is really an important stage too. And now I've mixed some of that ultramarine blue with my permanent rose to get a nice bright violet for the base of the wing. And you can see how light the colors that are starting to dry toward the top of the wing, how light those are getting because as watercolors dry, it absorbs into the paper and some of that pigment does as well. And so when you first apply a watercolor wash, it's going to appear a little bit 
brighter and bolder than it will actually dry. Now I'm going to kind of speed things along as I apply washes throughout the rest of the hummingbird's body and tail. And you'll notice that I used a lot of nice bright Windsor yellow. And I like to do that in areas, even though when I look at the photo reference I don't see anything that's just like bright yellow. I do like to identify parts of maybe the green area that are just really shining where the light is hitting and making that kind of light up. And I like to use a nice wash of yellow at first. And then as I apply textures and details on top of that, just a little bit of that bright yellow is going to peek through and really give the impression of iridescence or just a really nice bright green. And some parts of this hummingbird are very, very dark. And that's where I'm applying a lot of this blue, but those are going to be areas that I really use a lot of um, different colors on just to create the impression that that's dark, but I don't like to use anything like, you know, black paint or anything like that to achieve those effects. I like to keep my dark areas really saturated and colorful and complex. And I'm going to be finishing up the hummingbird before I really get into the flower, but I'm just kind of applying some light washes to the flower. I used ultramarine blue on the petals, and then I just used my new gamboge or warm yellow on the stem and leaves. And now I have added a little bit more of my phthalo blue, and you can see this isn't a wash, and the wing at this point is very much dry. And so I'm using this to start defining the separation between those little feathers in the wing. But I want to keep this more controlled. And so there's less water in my mix. I still don't want to go overboard on how dark it is, so I'm really trying to control that and keep this pretty transparent. And again, with these separations, there's going to be parts in here that are very very dark but I'm not going to immediately go to like a really dark color to start doing those I want to build that up and actually the darkest colors that I have I'm going to be using in a very minimalist way because when it comes to the dark colors less is more and you know really same with very bright colors but with watercolor, it's really important to keep in mind to maintain your light values. That's kind of the challenge, I think. And now I'm starting to go in and just add a little bit of loose impression of feathers. And what I did was I, so I dipped my paintbrush into the paint, but then I actually blotted that off on a paper towel that's kind of off screen so that I kind of have a drier brush with just some pigment and then I can really control that texture. But at no point am I really trying to paint every individual little tiny feather on the body of the hummingbird. The most that I really focus on individual feathers is just going in to be in the wing because that area is a little bit more defined. We really want the body to have texture, but we want it to remain very soft and so we don't want to go overboard with detail. And if you look really closely at the reference photo for this painting, which by the way, I got this reference photo from pixabay.com, you will, if you zoom into the wing, notice some kind of gold or orange areas. And that's gonna be really important because otherwise everything in the wings is very cool in temperature and it's going to really add to it just to have a few accents of that nice warm orange in there. And so for now I've kind of just identified that area by adding a little bit more yellow. And the orange will come a little bit later. And the first dark mix that I have created is just another violet, and this one's just basically the same as what I had before, but it just has less water in it, and so it's more concentrated. And you can see that I'm using this very sparingly just to start building up some texture, but I don't want to go overboard with it.
and then I'm warming, I'm sorry, I'm noticing some warm tones on the belly and breast area of the hummingbird. And so I'm just very lightly adding in some texture in that area and using those colors in a way where, you know, my strokes are a little bit short and broken, it gives the impression that these colors have blended together, even though I'm really just kind of layering it on top of those greens. And now you can see that I'm using this violet to add a little bit more separation to the feathers and the wing. But even at this point, this isn't going to be the final color. I'll actually come up with an even darker mixture to kind of tone that down because right now you can clearly see that it's very purple. And again, you can kind of see that just by adding those small strokes within the green areas, it does just add the impression of, you know, some warm temperature mixed in with those greens. And when we're talking about, you know, creating sort of an iridescent effect, it's really important to have those lighter values, those like bright yellows and greens showing through. So this is a really dark color. It leans closer to the ultramarine blue side. And I'm using this just to help define some of these tail feathers. But I don't want to apply it in a way that I'm just completely covering up and obliterating that brighter blue. I'm letting just little peaks of that blue show through. Even though when I look at the picture it does look pretty solid, um, for a painting it's usually better to kind of allow some of those colors to show through. And now I'm just adding a little bit of volume to the bird. And this is basically, again, just very short strokes. And this creates texture. It also creates um, the impression that these colors are sort of blending together as the bird rounds. And so it's creating a little bit of form within the body of the bird. So it's just really important to keep in mind that at no point am I like using long strokes or outlining anything. When I'm a applying texture on top of these washes, it's almost always just these very short, subtle strokes. And the darker the color that you're using, the more sparing you want to be in applying those, so you don't want to overdo it. And again, I'm just adding a little bit of definition to the wings, building up those dark areas where the feathers are clearly being separated. and just looking for other areas that need to be defined further. And now I'm adding more ultramarine blue into this mix. And now this is the first time that I'm using the Scarlet Lake color. And what I usually find is that using ultramarine blue or a cool blue and mixing that with whatever warm red you're using, it creates a really deep, dark color. So. If you look on my palette, that looks like it's almost black. So this will be the darkest color that I use, and therefore I want to be really careful in how I apply it. And again, I'm not using this as any kind of outline, but as more just to add a little bit of texture or to glaze on top of some of the other washes where the feathers need to be darker or I need to, you know, show a little bit of shadowing or um, creating the illusion of a three-dimensional form. And 
And one thing I haven't mentioned yet, but you can kind of see there's a little bit of white around the eye. And that's actually not like a white within the eye of the hummingbird. From a distance, it kind of looks like, you know, it is, but it's actually just a very light area of markation on the hummingbird. So, and I did leave just a little bit of highlight on the actual eyeball that's a little bit difficult to see. You'll see it at the end when I do a close up. But unless you're going to use masking fluid, you just want to be really mindful of any area that is very, very light or that you want to retain the white of the paper. Now I'm using more phthalo blue just to identify some areas that I want to create more iridescence. I think phthalo blue uh, does a really great job. Anytime that you're doing anything that has iridescence in it, I think that you'd probably end up using quite a lot of phthalo blue. So I'm just trying to brighten up any of those areas. And now I'm just using a little bit of my permanent rose. It's not mixed with anything else to bring out some of the warm tones within the violet areas. And now I just need to hold my watercolor up a little bit closer so I can really see what I'm doing because again, I'm using this very dark color, the ultramarine blue, and a little bit of that Scarlet Lake or warm red in the wings. And I don't want to use this in a way that I'm totally covering up those other dark values I applied before. This is actually going to be the value that I apply the least amount of and so I want to be very careful so that when I place it on those dark areas of the wings that I don't cover up those other dark values with it because then it would end up looking uh, like an outline or like, you know, I was coloring in a coloring page or something like that. And I would say, you know, don't spend the most part of your watercolor painting with your nose right up to your paper because it's easy to overdo it on the details, especially early in the painting. Now I'm pretty much done with that hummingbird, I think, and I'm going to finish up the flower, which will be out a lot easier. And to keep the really soft and delicate texture of the flower, you just want to apply really light washes. So initially the only color I had applied was a wash of ultramarine blue, which is the cool blue. Now I am being very careful and applying some lighter washes of the phthalo blue to start adding a little bit of texture and dimension to the petals. But I don't want to cover up the initial wash, of course. And anytime that you're dealing with flowers, using lots of light washes is going to be the way to go. And I want to add a little bit of sunshine to a part of this flower and initially I just added some yellow into that mix which of course made a green so I actually I know you can't see because I cut this part out but I actually allowed the flower to dry completely before I did this and I ended up just cleaning off my palette so there wouldn't be any you know mixing happening and I'm using some of that new gamboge warm yellow just to apply a really really light wash on parts of the flower that 
I want to create the impression that there's a lot of sunlight hitting that area. And now that I've pretty much got all my washes finished, I'm going to go ahead and just start adding some definition and some shadows into the flower petals. And so I've added some ultramarine blue, and I'm being very careful about where I apply it. And it can be kind of easy to interpret all this texture as like lines, but it's really important to use kind of, you know, broken brush strokes to apply this texture. Because if you actually apply this like they're a bunch of lines, then you're just not going to get a very natural effect. And now I'm adding some permanent rose into that mixture with my ultramarine blue. And this is going to be the parts of the petals that are really getting the most, or sorry, the least amount of light. So they're going to be in shadow a little bit more. And so I'll use this even less than I've used other colors. And one way to think about this process is that when you start with a wash, you're kind of covering the entire area. And then as you progress and you, you know, bring out some textures and values, you're going to be applying less and less paint because you don't want to cover up that initial work. And again, not applying lines, but just kind of some broken strokes. And then I'm using this violet color to start defining some of the shadow areas on the stem, but not to worry, this isn't gonna look weird. I am, it is going to look green. So anytime I have a yellow, I like to add a shadow by applying violet to the shadowed areas. And I think that that just kind of builds up a really nice natural shadow. And now I'm going back in with some green and just kind of going over especially the yellow parts but also the violet parts and that's going to make this look a lot more natural and green and i say this all the time but be careful with your phthalo blue because it's such a strong pigment you can see i started out with a really light wash a light mix of that phthalo blue and it got really dark and bright really fast and what I did off camera was I actually wiped off a lot of the pigment from that mix into a paper towel before I started applying it here. So it's still looking very light. All right, well, and that is it. So I cleaned everything up. I'm taking the tape off. I like that I left this background kind of minimalist and I Sometimes I have a hard time doing that because I just feel like that's, I like to apply lots of washes, I guess, but it looks really nice with the white background and you can see all the textures that we've built up here. And I think that this is a really fun project. I think painting iridescence with watercolor is one of the funnest things. So I hope that you enjoyed this. And thank you.